So I'm really curious to make a comparison between Stanford and MIT. Of course. Um, which one do you like more? What are the differences, pros and cons on both sides? That's, that's tricky. Um, <laughs> I think, obviously, I've never been to MIT for undergrad or I guess I did grad school at Stanford. Mm -hmm. I think Stanford is probably a better place to be an undergrad. I think you get more, you know, as I said, well-rounded. Mm -hmm. uh, the professors there are extremely approachable. Um, and I think just like the student community there is very tight. Obviously, I've never been to MIT undergrad, so I can't actually compare apples to apples. But yeah, but I think definitely like both great, great schools. You can't really go wrong. Um, I think they have their different strengths. One mm -hmm. thing is that MIT, like the program is EECS, right? Which means EE and CS have never been separated. Yeah. Uh, so like on my floor, there are EE people. The building is the same. Uh, I think the connections between the two are much stronger. Whereas at Stanford, they are separate buildings. Yeah. Um, well, they're like, next to each other, right? They, the Gates building and... Uh... They're both monoliths, though, and so unless you like go out of your way to reach out, you're not going to talk to too many EE people as like a CS grad student or vice versa. Um, it's just harder to get that exposure, mm -hmm. and so that's I think one big difference between like having EE CS or just having you know CS, yeah. right? And in terms yeah. of you know the campus itself, which one do you prefer? I mean, I'm from the Bay. Uh, <laughs> like, I grew up around Stanford. It has a special place in my heart. Um, and the, the campus is beautiful. I really do like Boston and Cambridge, though. I think that one advantage to Boston and Cambridge, and maybe this is just coming from spending, you know, like 24 years in the Bay Area, is it's nice to like meet someone and not assume that they're a software engineer or work in tech. <laughs> Honestly, they probably work in biotech here, right? Like, or pharmacy, yeah. pharmaceuticals or something like that. Um, and that's just a nice shift, right? It makes you feel a little more special, you know? <laughs> so is, is that stereotype too that everybody, I don't know, you go to a party in the oh, Bay Area and everybody, what do you do? I'm in tech. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like maybe, maybe like I have a skewed view of this just because your circles expand from True. the people you know. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It does feel like the default. If you say you work in tech, like, you know, like the conversation stops, right? Like, <laughs> okay. it's like, all right, cool. Well, some people do startups in tech. <laughs> conversation also stops there, right? It's, it's, it's okay. common, right? Like, and I think that just has a culture difference that definitely makes a day-to-day -day life impact. Um, mm -hmm, for sure, yeah. yeah. One thing that I did notice about MIT, or one big plus side of MIT is Harvard, which kind of sounds yes. funny, but uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we can take courses from Harvard whenever yeah. we want to. So I think one thing, and this is also true back to the like, do you approach your PhD as school or job? Yeah. Is that it's a lot, I think my motivation to take classes as opposed to making progress on research is maybe more tempered. And so I'm like really taking the classes one by one during the PhD instead mm. of, you know, loading up on them just because I really want to make momentum on my research also, right? That's so, reasonable, yeah. There's some balance between that. I haven't even exhausted the MIT classes, much less like go to the Harvard ones. I might try to take some Harvard poli-sci classes or something like that. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm thinking about the same actually, yeah. or, or the business school maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. And um, another thing that I'm very curious about, so Stanford is super famous for startups. Um, I mean, Instagram were started there, I think, wasn't the professor you worked with, Dura Leskowitz, one of the co-founders or some person high up in Instagram? Uh, I'm not, I don't think Instagram. So he was chief scientist for Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest, I'm sorry. For a while. Pinterest, yeah. But he wasn't, I mean, one, one big difference between MIT and Stanford, is a lot of the Stanford professors are chief scientists at X. Like, oh, I, I see. Know, Salesforce or Pinterest or Faith, it was at Google or, right. Um, and I think that is less common here just because we're not close to a lot of these companies physically. Yeah. Right? So. Not, even though now it's starting. I yes. mean, Moderna is just around the corner. Right. So in biotech, yeah. this is more true. But definitely it would be mm -hmm. hard for like an MIT professor to be a chief scientist of somewhere that's like, I mean, New York would be closer, right? Yeah. And so like, <laughs> you do New York, but it, it's tough, right? Like, it is if you're, yeah. If you're not here, it is hard to be as directly interfacing on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis with these companies. Absolutely. Yeah. So remember when the first time when I came to Stanford, um, my friend gave me a tour and like instantly fell in love with the campus. I said, okay, I want to do my PhD here. 
in the end, it just didn't make sense because there's nobody working in quantum computing. Makes sense. So I didn't go and I'm very happy here. Uh, but one thing that I did notice is, so he showed me around for every building that we passed, he was like, oh, this is where Instagram was started. This is where Google was started. Uh, Yahoo was so my advisor in Switzerland. He was actually the PhD advisor of Jerry Yang, the, mm -hmm. the founder of Yahoo. And I think Sergey Brin and Larry Page were like in the, well, a few years later in the office right. next to where they started their first Google search engine. So did you ever get interested in these startups? Not super, to be honest. I think I spent a lot of my undergrad uh, teaching. So I was like a section leader and then a TA. That was a bunch of my time doing research. I've always felt like to do a startup, you need the idea first rather yeah. than just to do the startup. And so if I have an idea, maybe I'll start something. But yeah. at the moment, I'm pretty happy doing what I'm doing right now. So yeah. that might be still, I'm not sure. Do you think, obviously we're not, emerging that scene so much, but do you think that Stanford people are more into startups still than, than people here at MIT? I don't think there's a sizable difference. Okay. Um, I think having met people here, they're also vaguely interested in startups. The same is true at Stanford. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't think there's too much of a difference between the two schools on that front. Okay, so yeah. if you... And there are definitely like a lot of companies that came out of here too. Like I think Dropbox uh, the founders went to MIT, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Boston Dynamics. Exactly. Moderna. Right. But a lot of companies, yeah. All the really big names are still from Bay Area. But I think it's mostly a historical thing. I mean, Bay Area, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's still full with startups, obviously. But I feel like it's not becoming the sole place for startups in the US, no. right? And I think part of that is just like YC is not the only incubator anymore, <laughs> right? There's like a little bit more spread of power, both like geographically in terms of like who the major stakeholders are. Um, so yeah, I think it is democratizing it, which is probably which a, good is a good thing. Which is a good thing. Yeah, it's probably a good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's absolutely a good thing. Yeah. So Silicon Valley is getting really expensive. Yeah, so. and I think also like definitely there are new hubs coming up around the country, like Austin, right? Um, Seattle's always been one. I can't say that's a new hub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out the full podcast with Sachi Jane, you can click over here. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel over here. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.